see my book videos as much as I love making them then you don't have to thank me but you have to thank Miss Steph Bohr. I cannot describe how much I love her channel like she is literally the queen of booktube and book talk she literally changed my life because I'm pretty sure she is the main reason why I got back into reading in 2021 and I will forever be thankful. So I think it's only fair to participate in this trend that has been going on on YouTube where everybody reads Steph's five star reads and then tells their subscribers what they think about them. I really love watching those videos and I have read a pretty good amount of Steph's favorites already and loved almost all of them. So I think this this is a really good challenge to discover some new favorites, to see whether or not there are any books of hers that she has recommended that I actually don't like as much. So without further ado, let's get into this video and let's get into this book first, Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. I heard that this is a pretty controversial book, so I'm very curious to see what I will think about it. I will bring this book with me on my holiday to Ibiza, so let's travel and let's read together. I know that this is an age gap romance. I know that she is going to date the father of her boyfriend, which is kind of weird. I'm very excited to see how that is going to play out. Um, and I'm really excited, especially because look at where I'm sitting, guys. I'm like near the ocean. Basically, I can roll and then I'm in the ocean. I've never been at a more beautiful place in my entire life. I'm having my sangria and I'm just gonna relax, read this, and I'm so excited. didn't really update you guys on the progress that I made. I also didn't get that far into the book. I got to page 50 um, and I was just really distracted by the ocean and the food and of course the sangria. But today I will get further into it. I really love it so far and I've definitely discovered some really questionable things. <laughs> Our main character girl, Jordan, doesn't have a good life whatsoever. Actually, every time she blows out a candle, she wishes for the exact same thing, and that is for tomorrow to be better than today, and she wants a life that she doesn't need a vacation for, so that implies that right now she's not living her best life. Also, her relationship with her boyfriend doesn't seem as wholesome as you want a relationship to be. Like, first of all, of course, she's attracted to his father, so that says a lot already. But also, when he says, I don't deserve you, then she thinks, no, you don't. So that implies that there are some underlying issues. What I'm really curious about, though, is that she says, now it's cool and me. Just the two of us, two scars, no longer three. So I'm really curious who the third person in their relationship or friendship was. Why this cool guy kind of seems a little bit toxic or actually a lot. Why he is such a badass, like they have to bail him out from jail. And what is going to happen with the father because Pike seems really interested in Jordan and the only thing that's really holding him back is her age and the fact that she is his son's girlfriend which is like super weird but he does feel a very strong attraction to her so I'm really curious as to how this is going to play out. In this book Jordan is 19 so it is like a legal relationship I think. I definitely want her to break up with this cool guy because I got some really weird vibes from him already. I can definitely feel the vibe guys. I feel the like chemistry and the tension is building up. I think that I'm really starting to like Pike at this point in the book. I feel like they both have a very difficult backgrounds, uh, especially regarding their family situation. And I think that is the connection that they're gonna make. They're gonna bond over trauma 
drama and I usually love that in books when two main characters connect on such a deep level and they can understand each other from their past experiences so yeah I'm really excited to see where this heads okay I was reading for a bit on the bed because let's be honest that's the most comfortable after all and they got into their first fight and Pike is a little misogynistic so I said that I was feeling the vibe now not so much anymore I mean he doesn't have any reason whatsoever to be that possessive so kind of disappointed Mr. Pike I hope you guys can hear me because I'm reading in the play but Pike just totally redeemed himself because he bought Jordan the cutest pink cake with roses on it I think that I'm starting to like him again despite all the troubles that he causes and all the arguments that they have I think he's willing to learn from his mistakes and he's so cute I finished birthday girl and I can totally see why Steph loves this so much Pike and Jordan are so compatible and they're like made for each other so yeah a really good romance in my opinion 4.5 out of 5 stars the only reason why it's not 5 stars is because at some points in the book Pike wasn't you know the ideal boyfriend uh, but he definitely redeemed himself so yeah 4.5 out of 5 stars it is next up on the list is Confess by Colleen Hoover I know that I'm going to love this book for sure because I love every single book that Colleen has ever written that I read so far so I'm really excited to read this oh my god reading update guys I just read the first chapter and this is the most heartbreaking most devastating saddest first chapter I've ever read in my entire life I feel shattered like little spoiler alert but not that deep because it literally happens on the very first pages of this book but the main character loses the love of her life at age 15 and it all happens in the first few pages so I feel <laughs> incredibly sad right now uh, I'm really curious to see how this story is gonna progress oh my god guys i already annotated so many things in this book and the paintings that are right here that correspond with the confessions that's insane come on look at this i finished confess you guys and i highly recommend you to read this it was so good this is about owen and auburn owen is this artist and he paints paintings based on confessions that he receives from people anonymously and one day auburn sees this help wanted sign outside his gallery she needs the money so she takes a job and of course they fall in love with each other but auburn's life is at a definite low point she's struggling with a lot this reminded me a lot of reminders of him so if you've read that and you liked it then this is a total recommendation there are secrets between them the way that these characters are connected when you find that out like their past and present is connected in such a beautiful way i really really like this and bonus for the paintings that are included inside which i already showed you guys the only reason why i don't give it five stars which i normally do for colleen hoover books is because this kind of put me in a reading slump i don't know why but this took me like two weeks to finish and that's not usually the case for me when i read like normally i read a book in like i don't know two three days so i don't know what was happening there but yeah um that's the only reason why it's not a five stars go read this if you haven't already i just finished my workout of the day and i got a new package in the mail from amazon and when you see that it's from amazon you know that it's a book and i'm really curious about this one um, this is the fine print by Lauren Asher and if I'm gonna be very honest with you I don't know if I'm gonna like this this is the first book in this challenge that I think I wouldn't have chosen if it wasn't for this video and that makes me kind of nervous um, this is about theme parks and 
call me crazy but i'm not the biggest fan of theme parks like roller coasters attractions that's not really for me um so i don't know how much i'm gonna love this vibe but everybody says that this book is amazing not only steph but i heard it from so many booktubers and book talkers so i'm just gonna try it out maybe i like it maybe i don't we shall see i already annotated so much in this the chemistry between the couple is unmatched and the way that he takes her in a private jet to new york on their very first date is just amazing i am obsessed with this rowan just ruined everything oh my god i finished the fine print you guys and just quick little summary this is about rowan and zara one night zara submits a drunken proposal criticizing dreamland's most expensive ride and dreamland is like the equivalent of disneyland and little does she know that she actually gets accepted for the job and she has to work together with rowan and let me tell you rowan is a very difficult boss to be around it's like the typical grumpy sunshine trope and of course they fall in love with each other uh, but their relationship is made very complicated by secrets that rowan doesn't share with zara and you know that creates a very tumultuous but amazing ride to stay within the you know fairy tale theme park theme um i really love this i thought this was going to be too much of a fairy tale book and i don't know recently i'm not really into those kind of fluffy romances so i thought it would be you know a lot more disney than it actually was but i was completely wrong this book was so good and that only goes to show how amazing it is to read somebody else's favorite books because i would have never picked this up also the cover isn't as appealing to me like i don't know it looks kind of like historical or boring i don't know maybe it's just me but i'm usually more you know a sucker for these kind of covers uh but this is amazing 4.5 out of 5 stars the only reason that i do not give this five stars is because i don't know towards the end of the book i kind of got sick of it a little bit and i wanted it to speed up a little bit more but you guys the chemistry between these characters is amazing you have to read this it totally deserves the hype that it gets so steph I loved it. Wait, I totally forgot to mention something really important and that is that I love this book so much that I actually already started reading the sequel. I didn't have it like in my house so I immediately downloaded it on my phone and I started reading it on their terms and conditions and what I've read so far it's equally as good so you know that only goes to show how much I actually love the fine print. I just wanted to say that because I totally forgot but yeah terms and conditions also really good so far okay so that was my review of the books that i recently discovered through steph and now on to oh my god i knew this was gonna happen um all the books that i already read that steph has recommended uh, because i read a lot a lot of books because steph said they were good starting off with the deal and i'm going through these rather quickly because i already mentioned all of these on my channel already so you can watch my older book videos i will link my book playlist down below to see like the full synopsis and everything i'm just gonna tell a little bit about each book and my rating starting off with the off-campus series hockey romances companion novels i love this series so much it feels like you're friends with the characters which is amazing you get to know them through this series and the spin-off briar you the books are angsty they're spicy they're full of like college drama and i'm here for it so five out of five stars for this entire series next up addicted slash cutaway sister series i've only three books in so so far i've only read the addicted series and i can already say that i love this so so much just like with the off campus series it feels like you're friends with this group and it feels like you actually know them which sounds so weird and so insane to say but 
steps at the same and i don't know why but i feel so connected to these characters the first three books are about lily and lo lo is an alcoholic and lily is a sex addict and together they're struggling with their addictions they were first in a fake relationship then it turned into a real relationship they're helping each other but there are many many obstacles along the way they both come from really really rich families like i'm talking insanely rich the top one percent of the world um, so it's just really interesting to read about their glamorous lives in the spotlight and all their friends and their family. I love this. I uh, completely agree. Five out of five stars for me. Then a book that I didn't love as much as Steph did, The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. It's now even a movie with Lucy Hill. And this is like a workplace romance. It's enemies to lovers. There's so much rivalry and banter. And I don't know, I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars and that's still pretty high because it was definitely an enjoyable read but to me it wasn't as special as everybody said it was like I had such high expectations for this and it just didn't meet those high expectations like the banter is fun to read about but it was a little bit too much in my opinion uh, their rivalry was really like stupid because it really wasn't about anything, you know, they weren't true, true enemies. So yeah, it's enjoyable, but does this deserve the hype that it still gets to this day? I don't know. It's not my favorite book. The Unhoneymooners and the Spanish Love Deception both are so super similar and I love them both. Uh, both are 4.5 out of 5 stars. I love The Unhoneymooners more than I love The Spanish Love Deception. Both are about girls who go to a wedding abroad. Both are enemies to lovers. I just feel like The Unhoneymooners is a little bit more... I don't know, it's, it's better executed in my opinion and this was a book that I absolutely couldn't put down whereas this, it's also way thicker. It was such a slow burn that sometimes I wanted it to hurry up a little bit more. Like it was a little bit too slow for me but regardless, very, very fun reads. Love in Other Words is a 5 out of 5 star read for me. This is so cute. Childhood, best friends to lovers. This is the most wholesome read you could possibly find and I love this with my entire heart. They are both book lovers so if you love reading about reading then this is so cute. The Song of Achilles is a book that Steph recommended and she said in her video that this is a book that everybody must read at least once in their life and I couldn't agree more. This is such a staple in a book lovers collection and I think that you know, in a couple of years, this will become a classic. It's so well written. It's a retelling of Greek mythology. It's a story of um, Achilles and Patroclus, their love story. And it's so beautiful. There are so many amazing quotes in this. And I was just captivated by this story. Love, love, love it. Five out of five stars. Then Steph also recommended Daisy Jones and the Six and the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, both by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And you guys already know I love Taylor Jenkins Reid with my entire heart. All her books are like historical fiction and I love that so, so much. This is about old Hollywood. It's about the glitz, the glamour, the secrets, the ugliness of fame love 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 it and this is set in the 70s it's sex drugs rock and roll this is written in interview style which was very interesting very different than your usual reads i needed to get used to that interview style a little bit at first but then i absolutely adored it i definitely gave this one a five out of five stars and this one as well love it also two of my absolute favorites then ugly love by colleen hoover i gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars it's not my favorite colleen hoover book because i just didn't connect with the characters as much as i do in her other novels like all her other books get five out of five stars for me and this is the only one that got a half point lower and that doesn't sound like a lot but for me it is because Usually my expectations for Colleen Hoover are really like through the roof and I don't know maybe it's because of the reasoning why the guy in this book got together with the girl like without spoiling it too much at first they have um, a friends with benefits kind of relationship but they're not even friends like it's just the sex you know and that didn't really appeal to me i usually love it when they build up an emotional connection first and then 
I don't know, I didn't really like the guy in this book that much but the story is really beautiful and heartbreaking so I still gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars and the writing is really good, I love Colleen's writing and that's why the last book um, of this entire video that Steph gave 5 out of 5 stars and that I read because of her because she recommended this November 9 and I love 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 this it's about Ben and Felon Felon got into an accident leaving her face all scarred and she's really insecure but she wants to become an actress and Ben is an aspiring writer and one day they meet each other and then they decide to meet every single year on November 9 but have no contact in between. So that's a very interesting concept to me. I loved the plot twist. Um, this is just so insanely good writing wise. Like I just couldn't put this down. It was a true page turner and you have to read this if you only read like one book then read this and taylor jenkins read because she's amazing and addicted the addicted series this is also really good if you love spicy books okay those are my favorites okay guys i was literally already taking my makeup off for the day and then i was thinking about all the books that i mentioned and i was like oh my god i completely forgot Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. Steph mentioned this one in her last uh, Five Star Reads video and I just had to include it in this video as well because I read this and I also gave it five stars. This is so good, you guys. Um, this is about Kenna. In the past, she had made a huge mistake and she gets sentenced to prison. And that in itself is already horrible, but she also has a daughter that she has never held, never kissed, never played with because of this mistake that she made. And then she goes back to the town where she's from. Everybody hates her. Everybody wants to keep her out of her daughter's life, except one person, Ledger. And she falls in love with Ledger and he's also at the same time the only person that might want to bring her closer to her daughter. But there are secrets between them. This whole entire book you don't know why Kenna was sentenced to prison. You can't imagine her doing something so completely wrong. You're constantly wondering why everybody hates her so much because she seems like such a genuinely nice character. But when you find that out it's just so devastating the way Ledger and Kenna and her daughter are connected are just so beautiful and i would highly recommend this so i had to include it in this video even though i'm like without makeup and i was already like preparing for a peaceful evening in um this is my last recommendation of this video totally agree with steph five out of five stars so overall i can definitely say that steph has really really good taste most of the books that she recommends i absolutely adore so if you haven't watched her channel already please do so go give her a follow also on tiktok her tiktoks are amazing as well and then that was the video for today oh by the way if you guys have any recommendations for me then please let me know because i need some new recommendations because i always want to know what you guys are reading so um yeah let me know your favorites and then i want to wish you all an amazing day bye bye love you